I know I sound like I've contradicted everything I said earlier when I said focus <laughs> on yourself, but the right person really will, but they're very far and few between because it's like to find that one good guy for me or that one good woman that's solid for you that really will root for you, mm. like it's very rare. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the CEO cast, the number one place for showcasing business and entrepreneurship. Now today, you lot join me on a completely different episode because I'm with the one and only beautiful Cheyenne Reynolds. Oh, thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> Why did I get so huh? shy? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> How welcome, are you? I'm good, I'm good. I was going to say, welcome back to CEO cast. This is a, admittedly, this is the second time we're doing this for reasons. Should we go into later on in this podcast or leave it out or? It's completely up to you. We'll see where to go, where it runs. But anyway, how's, how's your week been? How's, how you been? Yeah, it's good. Um, I can't complain. Sun shining. Yeah. You know. For randomly. Life's good. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe and set the bell notification to all so you never miss a single episode. So for people who might have seen you, they might haven't seen you, whatever, um, you know, you're famous for grilling guys on dates, essentially, right? You've done one with Tate. You've done one on HS TikTok-y um, and loads and loads of people, right? So... Before we get into that and where you started and everything, I kind of want to understand your background. Yeah, okay. Um, where did this whole dating idea come from? Where does it generate from? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the content journey, I actually used to be a streamer. Yep. And I used to I used to have like a big audience that was actually in the States. So kind of UK never really like, can I swear? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the UK never really like fucked with me content okay, yeah. wise. And um. It was just, I always wanted to be a presenter. Uh, that's still my end goal, just to create content that's thought provoking, sparks conversations and debates, which like fortunately I do do with Grillin. And um, I think, yes, yeah, so I was doing, I was streaming about five years ago. And that's when I realized like, I, I love content. I just love conversations, I love everything like that. Mm. And then I spoke with someone at BBC Free and I just said, look, I want to be a presenter, what can I do? And they actually told me, they said, look, I'll be honest with you, uh, we're going to be looking at content creators and people with big platforms. So my advice is just create a platform. So how long ago is this now? This was like four years ago. Okay. And so, so it's still recent then? Yeah, it's still recent. Yeah. And I just thought, well, do you know what? The, and the thing is, I love conscious content, but that just doesn't go viral. Yeah. And I just kind of was like, I need to think of something that goes viral. And then I thought of the show Grilling. Um, I didn't actually think of the name. That was actually Harry. So shout out to Harry at Standout TV. But um, I was like, well, something that's always popular is dating and people love knowing about people's like date lives. So I was just thinking, what's the way that I can do it where I'm still true to me? And it was kind of like people label me as a big feminist, which I don't even think like <laughs> is a bad thing. I think especially after the Tate episode, that's why. <laughs> yeah. And so then I just thought, let me just challenge men on the, the way they date women because I just don't like it. I find like the world is quite misogynistic. Yeah. But at the same time, I do like a gentleman. So I was like, let me just create a show that can bring that. And that happened to be like grilling. <laughs> so with, with like the whole dating aspect, because there's loads of different ways you can make an entertainment show that specializes in, I don't know, just like a foot side and sort of thing, right? Um, but then why, why dating? Was it something in your life that you had experienced with different men, different types of dates and stuff like that? And was it something personal to you? Yeah, I guess so. Cause do you know what it was? I was kind of like, I just fed up with the way like men just date women or like the way they try to like court women. Yeah. So I, I'm not a serial date by the way. And it sounds like I am, but I just kind of feel like I wanted to challenge this narrative on like how easy it is for people just to date. But at the same time, I kind of feel men are today because of this hookup culture that we're in, it was kind of like, I want to challenge that, mm. you know, because I just don't like the way, you know, men dress on dates. And I know that people will come for me and be like, oh, you shouldn't change your man. But it's kind of like we've just lost the art of dating. This episode is brought to you by Sunamos. Now, if you don't already know about Sunamos, I don't know where you've been because they've got some of the nicest and most long lasting perfumes out there. One of my top favorites is the Arabian Nights oil and just a couple drops keeps you smelling fresh the whole day. Sunamos have got stores all over the UK. So chances are wherever you're watching this from, they've probably got a store near you. And if not, they're also online based as well so there's no reason for you not to get it and if you don't know what fragrance you want to get i suggest going to the store checking them all out and seeing which one you like the most so get your cinemas fixed today and use the code ceo cost 15 for 15 percent off your purchase but don't yeah. you think at the same time I, like not just the guy but the girl as well should be comfortable on a date because then when you when you rock up in your own because look you can you can dress up on a first date and all that sort of stuff but if you're with the girl for a long time you're not going to be doing that all the time so you've set the bar high now from the first date and then you've got to kind of live up to that so I feel like if you downplay it a bit on the first date, you can easily 
have that for the rest of the yeah. relationship. Do you see what I'm saying? No, I, no, don't get me wrong. I do agree because I kind of feel like this is a conversation that I have quite regularly. Like men, you create a rod for your own back sometimes. Like I don't mean as in like, listen, I like to get glam and look nice and you know, my eyelashes, hair extensions. But it's kind of like, you. it's like, it's nice to look nice. I don't mean like, I'm not expecting anyone to take me to Hakkasan on a first date. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like personally I don't like those fancy things because for me I feel you don't have much to offer other than that unless obviously that's where you're going on a regular I don't think it's I think you need to always spend within your means and mm-hmm. date within your means and that's the problem with today this whole hookup date culture people kind of feel that it's that expectation because of social media they think that every woman wants to go to Hakkasan or where so I don't know I couldn't even list you the fancy places because I actually don't go to them <laughs> what's your idea of a first date then an ideal um, first date let's just say aside from dinner because that seemed like obvious what's yeah. a good first date for you I just like a picnic honestly I'm so I'm so go to the basic. park on a sunny day picnic yeah but I like thoughts so like take a blanket like we're watching the sunset yeah um just well, can fruit. you really do all that on a first date though yeah of course you can or like it's just something so casual and it doesn't even cost a lot just get some munchies like and Tesco's meal deals and that <laughs> yeah and just chat because the the initial meeting on a first date is seeing if you actually like each other yeah because I don't want to like spend all the time getting ready and if I don't actually like you the conversation's dry so if you do something where you both can agree so I'll, I'll bring the blanket you bring the snacks kind of thing and yeah. then we just both meet in the middle you know but it's it's difficult what do you look for what do you think is the most important thing We'll get into this later on as well. But just, you know, along the lines of first dates, what makes a guy stand out for you to go on a date with him in the first place? Um, I think a guy that just listens. Yeah. Yeah, because I kind of feel I'm very thoughtful. I'm a thoughtful person. So I pay attention to detail. So say if I said like, oh, like I really want to go to Q Gardens. So if if he'd remembered that from a conversation, was like, oh, do you want to go here? Mm. Like that would be the best date for me. You know, or just anything that I've said where they're attentive. And that's it. Like, I'm actually not, like, a high maintenance woman because I know that people, like, see me from the show and they do make these assumptions where they think I'm, like, this category of woman. And I kind of feel that's also why the show does is so successful because people make these assumptions about me. And it's even, like, when people meet me, they're like, oh, you actually act quite chilled. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm actually not a whole person, you think. No, but <laughs> like we were saying, like, off camera and other conversations and stuff, you know how to work the camera. You know how to, you know, start conversations, start things to go viral and stuff. So, like I'll say for everyone, yeah, everyone's online personality is is kind of different, in a sense, to when you see them in real life because it's got to work for the camera and got to work for the views, essentially, and you've smashed it with that. Thank you. But at the same time... Like you said, for the people who don't know you in real life, they don't know what to think of you. Not only have the content to to base yeah. you on and, and judge you on, essentially, right? Yeah. So, has it been difficult for you in that sense when people come up to you and they think, like, "Yo, Shahan, you're not the person I thought you were." Yeah, I guess so because I kind of feel like with like I don't like the whole fame kind of label with it, but I kind of feel like with it, it comes at a cost. And I feel like for me, my cost, the cost for me is like my integrity and my morals and like my pure intentions. Because obviously a lot of things that I will do will be clickbait. Yeah. Because for me, like the whole point of the grilling show is to entertain people. But I know that people will look at it and they just think, oh, well, they've put me in that category anyway. Yeah, so yeah. for me, I don't spend time trying to convince people I'm a good person. I just know and that's where I pride myself because people that know me know my intentions so it's not that deep but sometimes it can be frustrating because it's like I went to a festival at the weekend yeah, and, that, yeah. and it was really nice and it was a very humbling experience at least I'm not even joking a hundred people stopped and asked for photos I can imagine like it was so nice <laughs> you but... see Shaiyan Reynolds out in public <laughs> and you think yeah yeah I'm getting a picture <laughs> showing <And> the mountain <laughs> and it was crazy because a lot of people were like oh my god like you're really nice and I'm just like oh my god so that's made me kind of look internally of like just what kind of image and representation do I actually want to put out there so that now leads to obviously like I'm starting my own show now which is on my YouTube if you mm-hmm. don't mind me shamelessly plugging it on, which is plug it, Cheyenne it? Riddles <laughs> so what's <laughs> the show called? Creative. it's just my name <laughs> what's the show called though? <laughs> no I haven't thought of the show name yet because it's okay. like even with this space, I've been looking for it for six months. Yeah. Um, I could have just filmed anywhere, but it's You found it the other day though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And it's kind of like, I like the place and the vibe has to feel right. Yeah. And it just feels like home, so. <laughs> Fair play. All right, now we, we touched on the content, right? But let's dive it back further because mm-hmm. I saw in your Instagram story the other day that you were once in a, um, 
homeless shelter thing yes. something like that oh my god yeah I was talking about my struggle meal which was like the 20p noodles <laughs> yeah so ex- explain this I mean yeah what, what was that situation like I was like I come from quite a dysfunctional upbringing just like many other people like a lot of people are trying to survive trauma Mm -hmm. and me five years ago I was just in a toxic environment that I couldn't be in and I had to just live I had I had to go by myself but at the time I had no money no income no resources was that um, a home environment or relationship environment um well one I've done it it happened to me twice (laughs) it's not happened twice I moved out of the home then I was in a toxic relationship, which I had to get out of as well. So it was kind of like, you know, the, the, that cycle when you come from a broken home, you then kind of go on to something toxic. And it was just this horrible cycle that I just really needed to get away from, yeah. you know. And so for me, the only option was to go into a shelter. And and that saved my life. And don't get me wrong, it got me where I needed to be today. But I kind of feel with that. I look back when I reflect, I just think, oh my God, I don't know how I done that. I lived in like one room for a year, like, because I had to save and everything like that. And was it shared or just just... It was like, I, I got my own room. I was quite lucky. So this is the thing, this is how I know I'm a natural hustler. Like, we all got our own rooms, but I got like the best room with the ensuite. Because <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was like, no one else, everyone else had to share communal bathrooms. Yeah. But I just was like, I really need my own bathroom. I was a bit of a diva, but not in a horrible way. It was more an endearing way. That's why okay. I always got what I wanted. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but I think even with that, um, I might touch on it. I kind of feel, and this is why it's important that I speak on it. I kind of, I see that people always say to me, there was no way that you've had hardship because like you're pretty. And I kind of feel like, don't get me wrong, this pretty privilege can get you so many things in life. But there's a lot of women out there that will not use their looks to advance them. And I'm saying that I've got a date show using my looks. But in the sense of in the real world, I don't rely on a man for anything. I don't rely on a man to pay my way. Like I will do everything myself. And I look and I think I genuinely chose the long, hard route of like struggle and survive. But you know, and I feel, but that's character building. That's got me where I needed to be, but I just needed to put that in there for all the men that think women just ponce off of men and want an easy lifestyle. Like I'm willing to do the work. <laughs> yeah. So how long ago was that? That was five years ago. So obviously you're out of the home shelter now, right? So yeah. we'll touch on this later on in the podcast mm-hmm. again, but how's, how's that, what's that feeling like for you going from that to where you are now? For me, it's like... Because obviously knowing you personally, I know you're not where you want to be yet, but you still smashed it out of the park. Right, yeah. you're still doing a lot better than a lot of people, so congratulations for that. So Thank then, you. how's that feel with that whole transition? Sometimes it's kind of when you have to take a moment because I'm very hard on myself, where I can never be good enough. Mm-hmm. So I have that mindset where no matter what I do, I'll still be like, oh, I could have improved there, I could do this. But when I look back at the journey and I just think, like, I'm so grateful for like my mindset because I'll be honest with you, like when I was going through it, I was re- I was really suicidal and I was really depressed like I started to pick up like an eating disorder because it was kind of I was punishing myself because I didn't like where I was in my life and it was kind of I just would purposely not eat because I just wanted to punish myself and it was only until obviously I had a really good support group of friends like my friends shout out to you lot because I love you guys so much like they really saved me but it was just horrible headspace to be in I just look and I think I'm so grateful to God that like I've been able to just get through everything and just and just be here today really. For anyone who's going through that right now because I I have spoken to a few people who are going through similar situations at the moment what sort of advice would you give them from coming from that? Um I just probably say look after yourself and just be kind to yourself because I feel when you're going through situations like it's so easy to compare to other people or just just always to see the worst in any situation but you have to remember like you have to care for yourself so like you uh, even eating like eating breakfast is a form of self-love mm-hmm. and self-care you know showering every day like you have to make sure that you do things for you get yourself out of that headspace like go for walks look after yourself because it's so important like no one's got yourself like you've got you yeah, yeah for you sure know? for sure you mentioned something there just when we were speaking on it pretty privileged right do you believe it's a real thing because i was speaking to uh, this about uh, uh, with a girl right and we were, I can't remember the exact conversation, but I was just like, yeah, you got pretty privileged. I said it straight up to her. And she was like, no, I don't. But what she was describing pretty much sounded like her to me, right? So do you think <laughs> that sometimes a girl's prettiness can get her to some places? Not to say they wouldn't do otherwise, but it definitely helps. 
Oh, it definitely helps. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, I'd be a complete idiot if I said, oh, no, it's not a thing. Like, it's just an unfortunate thing because as women, like, we're not asking for people to put us in this, like, on this pedestal or anything like that. It just happens to be that's what people are doing, mm -hmm. you know, because I noticed that in situations, like, I would always get favoured and it would kind of be like, I don't want to be favoured. Like, can you just favour me? Because it might be just because I was good at what I was doing. <laughs> but when you break it down and like, then someone's like, no, it is because of this. Or mm. you then realise the cost is, I've been given this advantage, but then later like, like a boss or a colleague has tried to make a move to me. So it's not really a privilege because there's always like, someone has an ulterior motive at the end of it. And yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. really fair because for me, like I'm a smart woman and I'm a hard worker. So when someone does that, it completely invalidates all the hard work I've put into something for someone to make a comment, oh, she only got the job because she's pretty. Yeah. You know, so. With, with the dating stuff, this is interesting, right? Because like I said, we wanted to have this conversation with you as well. We've spoken about it off camera previously, whatever. Um, now, obviously, you know the situations that I've explained to you before. Yep, we, we both know that. Um, and so being an independent woman yourself, would you say it's going to be harder for you to find a partner? Because as you said, you don't need someone to, you know, pay for you, care for you, et cetera, because you can do all that stuff yourself because you're a born hustler. Now, being a born hustler as a female, would you say your standards are quite high in terms of the guy that you eventually settle down with? Yeah, do you know what? It's so hard. Like, this is because this is what I've now learned. Because you're not, you're not a normal person. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, even for the guys, I could speak for the guys as well. When you're a born hustler, you know, it's going to be harder for you to settle down because you're going to look for certain things in, in a partner and sometimes that might not match up. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Well, this so. is the thing and, and I feel like this is the hardest thing. Like, dating an, an independent woman is really hard and I kind of feel like as independent women, we also have to hold ourselves accountable with like what it is we actually want from men because I kind of feel like we demasculate men because we are so in our masculine energy and that's something that, that I work on because for me I actually just want to be a nice cute little girlfriend that lets a man pay a bill <laughs> you know like I like that I like a man looking after me but unfortunately because I am so like hyper independent it's so frustrating because I sometimes need to learn how to submit and surrender because it's sometimes like just let a man just be like, babe, I've got this. But yeah, instead, yeah, yeah. Miss Independent Cheyenne has to be like, no, no, no. It has to root through my bag, get the money and pay the bill. Like, don't do that. You know, like you make it harder for yourselves. And I kind of feel like in general with dating, because I do so much for myself, I will go into a conversation thinking, what can you do for me that I can't really do for myself? Yeah. So that's you what I'm saying. So you know when, when I was, this situation I'm talking about, yeah, I don't know if I told you this at the time, but when we went to Starbucks, yeah, I paid for it. She tried pulling out a card and had a problem with it. Right? <laughs> so I was like, in my head, I'm thinking, what are you doing? Like pulling out your card? For what yeah. reason? There's only, a, what, I don't know, five pound Starbucks, whatever the case is. Yeah. But the fact that you're pulling out your card, let me pay for it. Because in my head, I'm like, you can be a hustler all you want. But when it comes to, if we are together, don't touch your card. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So, but it's going to be a hard one, isn't it? So in a girl situation, as you, you can speak for this, it's just mad. <laughs> it is. And I've, but I've learned now, like, just let him, if a man wants to do it, let him do it. Like, let him be the man. And I think that's what we need to surrender because it's kind of like, I was actually, it was really funny. So I was on the train the other day and I'm on the phone to my friend and this guy had asked to take me to dinner. And so I'm talking to my friend about it. And then she's just like, oh, suggest to go here instead. And then I said to her, I was like, I'm, he's just like, stepped up as a man yeah. to take me out on a date why am I now going to shut him down with my suggestion what was like the suggestion? don't do that it was just a place that was more convenient for me okay cool. and it was just just let him do it it wasn't Pakistan or anything no <laughs> <laughs> and then and then after I just sat up and then the man sat opposite me went excuse me miss and I was like yeah and he was like he was like madam and he was like you're, you're going to live a very long time that was very wise words <laughs> because I said back to her don't sometimes just let a man be a man and I think this problem with women we're trying to compete with men like whether it's like subconsciously that we're doing I know that it's something that I do because I don't like men having control over me yeah. because I used to be with like a very narcissistic abuser that he would manipulate me and he would say to me you wouldn't have that if it wasn't for me so that's why for me I'm so sure to be like I'm gonna pay for this you haven't got that hold against me mm -hmm. it's more for that but 
yeah, I've just learned. Just let the men be the men. <laughs> now, you've mentioned on grilling a few times that you still speak to your ex and you'll go out for dinner here and there with him, yeah? I think you said once once every few months, once a year. Yeah, no. Like <laughs> yeah. What, what was it? Yeah, so... <laughs> once a week. <laughs> basically, I actually don't. Yeah. Um, it's like, once again, it is for click, but I do have, like, I wouldn't say friendship with my ex, but we're on good terms. Like, if I see him, I say hello. Like, we'll probably pop up on Insta message, like, hey, how is everything? Like that's really it and if he's in the area we might just say oh let's grab food to eat but in reality if I have a partner I'm not going to go disrespect my man because I think above everything like what I do promote like actually Cheyenne is about a family unit and you have to prioritize your man above everything whether your ex whether I joke about my trauma bonds and my relationships so yeah (laughs) but relationships are hard like when you're a hustler right because one of the reasons why uh not to say I struggle with relationships but because you're so focused on yourself and building something yeah um whether it's a brand whether it's business whether it's personal brand whatever the case is you're so focused on that it's hard to divide your attention between because essentially being in a relationship is like a full-time job I think I think with it though because what as I'm I feel like I am getting older and wiser <laughs> you are, you <laughs> a lot are. of people could argue that <laughs> but what I've realized is like women we are very difficult Mm. and in an ideal situation like women we'd love to say oh like yeah we want to be a ride or die and we want to be there through from the beginning like, I like to believe that I, I am that woman um, and I definitely do believe that I am because even through situations like I'll hold people down like I used to pay for my ex do you know what I mean when he was trying to build himself like I held it down I was the one pet running the home you know and he was just working on his dream but obviously we didn't work out because that's what happened you can build a man up to be the man he wants to be then he just fucks you off so I don't advise any woman to stick around with a man unless he's gonna actually marry you from the beginning but um (laughs) when it was shade there (laughs) but I kind of feel as women we are actually really needy so as much as we say oh do you know what like you build, you do you, like, I'm just going to be here and support you. The reality of it is we get insecure, we get jealous, you work in late nights, so you now go and drinks with the boys, I'm going to get jealous and insecure. And that's not your duty to make me feel secure as a woman. That's my responsibility as a woman. And I kind of feel that's the issue where I think as women, we need to do a lot more work on ourselves and focus on ourselves because I think we put too much energy into men. And that's why also like a lot of women lose composure over situations and women do because I, I know I was recently, I dropped a clip on grilling yeah. saying about the, no such thing as a crazy ex. <laughs> you know I mean? That's but, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but um, obviously there is a such thing as like holding yourself accountable for situations. And that's where things start and problems start because you want to be this good woman, but then you let all these insecurities and fears run with you. And then you just, you're not even a nice woman anymore, mm. you know? So I just kind of feel, going back to the actual question, because I rambled on, I don't think there is a such thing as meeting someone and having a balance and having them support you. Because the reality of it is you have to make a compromise. And when you're building something, the only sacrifice you need to do is with yourself. So I, I would advise no one whilst you're building, don't have anyone around just you need to lock everyone off and even friends like not in a horrible way you have to just have such tunnel vision yeah if they ain't got the same energy as you then 100% they've got to be locked off because it's just like not just relationships but friends like for me now I'm so focused on getting to my end goal and what I want I don't have time to go for dinners with my friends and go to the clubs with my friends and things like that and I've not been a big clubber anyway but I'm just not on that anymore and or I compare to my compare with my friends that are all married and I think but you don't need to you're not on the same page as me anyway our conversations are different so right now I'm just on work mode so no one invite me out <laughs> See, it, that's interesting you say that because even from from people who don't really understand Instagram and you know work rise and influence life and all that sort of stuff even that festival you went to that was essentially work right yeah so I was um so yeah I went to a festival because I was sponsored to go there which was great yeah but other than that it's kind of like I'm, I'm in this transition with myself where do I enjoy it and enjoy the come up and the growth or do I just work hard? So even with that, I'm I'm just a bit stuck with it. No, but what I'm saying in that sort of situation where, where it looks like you're going out and you're having fun, which you are, of course, but it's also work. You're getting paid to go. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like your best of both worlds, essentially. You can enjoy it whilst you're working at the same time, but it's not just like you're going out for the sake of going out. You're going out for purpose, for reasons, work at the end of exactly. the day. Exactly. I'm going to bring it back to a conversation we had uh, last week or two weeks ago, whatever it was, mm-hmm. right? You said that your ideal partner, you wouldn't want them to be a hustler or something in that sense. You'd want to come home and they'd be your peace of mind. Yeah, do you know what? It's 
I kind of feel that because it goes into this whole like high status. I don't like saying high value, man, but like with this whole free top G. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I actually just say, whilst I'm actually like I'm not on my platform or anywhere else, like Andrew Tate is actually a nice guy. Mm-hmm. I just kind of feel with this whole social media thing. Things can just be misconstrued and screwed. Is that oh, that's mad. Screwed? When we filmed, he wasn't banned, was he? Yeah, and, and that's the thing. And he, a lot of things, I think, don't get wrong, a lot of things that he says is a bit crazy and out there. But it's so easy for the internet to take a clip from something yeah. and run with their own narrative and their own hidden agenda with it. Yeah. You know, and I feel obviously, as a woman, some things I saw were triggering. I don't know why I'm yeah. no, but on th- this. This is exactly what he said on the, um, you know, that video I sent you, that free yeah. top G thing. I watched that last night. That's exactly what he said. Like, there's clips from, or videos, long form videos from him from like five, six years ago. And there's people taking a small chunk of it to make him look misogynistic and etc. Yeah. And and run with that. And that's why that's going viral. And so people were spreading the whole negativity and stuff like that. Um, you haven't watched the video yet, have you? No, but I'm going to watch it before yeah. that gets taken down. <laughs> it's actually a good video. I don't think that'll get taken down. That's on his own website mm-hmm. and that. But it's interesting. But um, yeah, so what? You'd, you'd want to have someone that has peace it, of mind when you, when you come yeah, back from a long day. Yeah, because I think this is the thing. I think a lot of women that say like we want like this man that has this and could give you that lifestyle but having aspiring for that lifestyle comes at a great cost which is probably a man that's never going to be there a man that's probably going to go on a weekend business trip and have a weekend girlfriend if you know what i mean and and, and that's just the reality of like these well, no, it depends though isn't it it depends if you know that the guy is loyal he's not going to have a weekend girlfriend though is he yeah I, i'd like to believe that but in reality, listen, there's not this influx of women online that have OnlyFans and sugar daddies for no reason. Mm. So it would be completely naive to say like that there's a lot of people out here that just live good marriages because that's the reality of it. Like this whole Instagram culture of women that have these glor- glorious lifestyles, it's funded by a sugar daddy. Yeah, facts. You know? So let, let's not argue If you see that. your favourite influencer going to Dubai all the time, <laughs> <laughs> that's why. No, no, because I wanted to go to Dubai and purposely now, because of that, I will not go to Dubai. <laughs> Fair play. No, because I was on the opposite mind of saying that if I'm, I'm, if I'm doing what I'm doing, I want someone to do what they're doing as well. But then yeah. you kind of made sense to me when I was like, no, nah, because you want them to be You want peace. peace. Yeah, yeah, like for you as a man, like as much as you, you like to, like it's a nice idea. It's a nice ideal for me to be like, oh my God, me and my man, we're hustlers. We go yeah, get yeah, us, yeah. go out ma- matching like cars but then the reality of it is after you've had a long day you want to get in and just someone bring you peace yeah like you don't want a man that's now not got not home there's no dinner on the table for anyone you just want to have a nice relaxed home environment where you can like raise kids and have a good life but if you're all high flying you're just gonna have loads of nannies and there's really nothing there <laughs> i hear that but at the same time the, the contrary contrary to that is that let's say you're both hustling together in your 20s 30s whatever the case may is when you're when you're older You've got kids and you're balling on next level. And then you're you're together. You're both retired at that point or whatever the business is running in the background. You're chilling now. And then you can live your life, essentially. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, but that's what I'm we just have to be realistic about situations. Like, I, I would love for a man to be... Compl- and I'm not putting this on men before men manipulate this and say I'm saying all men are cheats because they're not there are, I know a lot of good men that wouldn't cheat and yeah. that's how I know because I never really say the label men are trash simply because the men that I'm surrounded by are really good men you know like they are men of faith you know they don't cheat they raise their children so for me I don't have that toxic I I just yeah I don't see that toxic vision of what everyone sees don't get me wrong I was brought up in that hmm. and I was raised in that but I made sure that my environment is not that so. here's, what, here's what I wanted to talk to you about as well yeah would you say love or relationship a healthy relationship at that at that be, can make you more successful obviously this is CEO cast off rules so we speak about business speak about success etc do you think having the right person beside you along your journey will make you more successful no, no, 100%. I know I sound like I've contradicted everything I said earlier. When I said <laughs> focus on yourself. But the right person really will. But they're very far and few between because it's like to find that one good guy for me or that one good woman that's solid for you that really will root for you. Mm. Like, it's very rare. Yeah, because also on the opposite to that as well, you could also find someone that would bring you down. Yeah. Without you even realising. And, and it's just like the little jealousy things. Like, for me... Like, obviously, my career now is in media, so I'm getting invited to a lot of, like, events, like, film premieres and stuff like that. So I know that 
if my man doesn't want to come with me and he's not supportive of that, he's going to just be jealous. Oh, you're going out all the time. Mm. Like people don't see that as I'm going out and it's work and it's networking or you need your face. But that's why you got to find someone who's understanding though yeah. of the whole situation. But people say it in the beginning and then in reality, people won't be supportive. And that's why it's very rare to find someone that actually is so supportive of that. It's like with men, uh, with you guys, to find a woman that is going to be so supportive. Like, And don't get me wrong, there's so many good women and I kind of feel... I can't argue that because women will hold it down. Women will make your house a home. Like, they yeah. will. But it's just finding the right woman. I think it's just it's just so hard finding the right person in general. Because mm-hmm. I kind of feel we get to a point where I think a lot of people, when we're single, we just then reach our 30s. And then it's just, oh, anyone will do. <laughs> yeah, but then at the same time, you can think in the beginning that you found the right person, yeah? And then it turns out that they're just as mad. Yeah. <laughs> like, but this- completely different. Well, I don't date now because it's kind of like I'm just so focused on work and in an ideal situation, I just, no, actually, I'm just going to shut up because I don't know what I want. Like, that's the reality of it is, like, I might have a list. But this is the thing, right? This is also interesting as well because now you're essentially famous here. Yeah? You've got big influence. A lot of guys know who you are, yeah? And, you know, watching grilling episodes it can get just an understanding of what you want from a man. Now, a man can come to you being the complete opposite of what you want but tell you what you want to hear essentially guys like you right so how can you like what's the, what's the sort of question how do you identify that how can you identify that do you know what i'm saying like you you could it could be all hunky dory in the beginning you know honeymoon stage and that and then the real person of them comes out and then you're in a whole different situation sort of thing yeah well i've noticed so this last year i'm not a big big data but i did notice that when guys had been trying to get my attention like they gave me a different version of them and I think I'm quite a chilled out person. So I know that when I'm like selecting, and I don't mean it as an, oh my God, I've got going, so many options. Going for, list, going for Tinder and that. <laughs> no, but in general, but before this, and like, I'll be honest, like, it's not like I'm ugly. So before even the whole like social media fame, like I always, I've always had options, yeah. if that makes sense. So for me, it's not, it's nothing different. It's nothing new. When you're a woman that is attractive, like you will always have options no matter what. Yeah. And I kind of feel, if anything, I've noticed men start to be more clout chasing. And it, it's funny because men say women are clout chasers, but from my experience, men kind of give me so many allowances because of like the status of like Cheyenne. And for me, it's not even that deep. I'm just like a normal girl, you know, like well, I'm a normal You say that, woman. but to, to us, you are. Yeah. Because we're, like, we're all in that game. But to someone who's not in that game and sees you, exactly when people come up to you and ask for pictures and that, you're not a normal person. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's really weird for me because just in general with this whole dating situation, like I just want someone that wants to date me for me. And I kind of feel like it's like with, it's like with status with anything, like people want to date you because you have that status. Like I'm sure you probably get it where people will be fine and then suddenly as soon as someone an outsider is like oh my god you're CEO well, this was, like, uh, then this suddenly was your theory when, uh, when the energy we're changes talking about that thing you know because yeah. it's once again like this whole clout status thing people's energy shifts like for example even at the event that I was at the other day so this guy we're chatting we're fine and then I was like oh by the way like don't let's not stand here let's just stand there and he was who's, like who's this you say guy or girl this guy that's okay, talking to cool. and um oh, wait let me explain the story better Go so on. like when i say men are clout chasers um everyone everyone is like everyone is a clout chaser so i'll give you a situation i was at an event the other week and i'm explaining to this guy let's not stand here let's just stand somewhere a bit more private because it's just all going to go a bit mad and then so i'm stood there and then loads of people are coming over, coming over, taking pictures with me. And it was very nice. Like, I'll always say yeah to pictures. And then suddenly the way it was, I don't know what it was, but it was now suddenly this guy's from a half interested conversation. Now he's 100% interested and wants to know why and more about me kind of thing. And I think, yeah, you can be intrigued, but it was just like he came with this different energy where now every time he's seen me at the rest of the event, he's putting his arm around me. And oh, I'm like, no, like, do not claim me. Like, I'm, I'm nobody's person like that. And that's where it's just kind of this whole energy shift that I'm sure you probably get it. Like, you could be chilling. And the moment other people start coming up to you, then other, it's like other people want in. They yeah, want yeah, a yeah. bit of that status or whatever it is. I status helps. <laughs> it, was, it was fucking funny because like, yesterday when I was in the gym, I had that sort of thing, right? Uh, I went to gym. I never go to gym at this time. I went at seven o'clock. Yeah, normally I go at nine o'clock when it's closing, quiet, and everything like that. Yesterday I went at seven for whatever reason. 
busy, packed. I had loads of people come up to me in the gym saying, yeah, watch a podcast, blah, blah, blah. I, like, same as you, I'd give them the time of day, a picture, whatever yeah. they want, yeah. But then it was mad because some girl came over to me after. She goes, oh, like, and I was, while I was speaking to this guy, she goes, oh, are you famous? I was like, no. And then the guy who I was speaking to, he was like, like obviously explaining all that sort of shit. And you could just see, like, not going to say they'll change anything, but it's just, you see it the does. whole energy shift. People it's crazy. Respond, it's, it's, people start responding to you different with the way other, other people treat you. And that's where it's like, it gets alarming because then you have to question who likes you for you and all these little things. Because for me, I like to just do normal chill. Like, I, I'm not even famous or anything like that. I'm nowhere near where I want to be, so I would never put myself in that category, mm. as humbling as it is. But it's just kind of like, I just want people that just want to just do normal chilled things. Like I feed the homeless quite a lot with my projects, pure love projects. I want someone just to come and do that with me. Yeah. Just chill. I'll do that with you. <laughs> Let's That's do it. it. Yeah. But um, but this is the issue though, because as time goes, goes on and you get more clout, you're just going to experience more of that, that same problem. As women in situations, we don't, we're not always honest about how we feel. And I kind of feel like women can be users mm. where we will see a nice guy and you'll think you're a really nice guy. And you don't want to completely say no, so we wouldn't want to rule him out completely. But then we don't want to go forward with him because it's kind of like I don't know if men do it. So like, so say if you know a woman's a good woman, yeah. you kind of keep her there, um, but you don't want to pursue her yet because you kind of know like if I wife her, like she's a wife, but I don't want to have a wife right now. Okay, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. if I men do it's that. Like what saying, but yeah. I'm guilty of that. Like I've done it before, where there's been a really good guy, um, and I haven't wanted to settle down straight away because, like I said, like I'm on my career. But I don't know if it would just cause too much dynamics in a relationship, me being with anyone right now. And it's like, he's such a good guy. So I, I haven't like, I shut, I have shut him down, but in my head, he's, like, still there. <laughs> he's there, but he might not be. And he can't wait for me. And I don't ever expect anyone to wait for me, but I kind of feel, I know who is a good man and who would be a good husband, but I probably am my own worst enemy and it's not me trying to see if the grass is greener because the reality of it is I don't actually know what I want mm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I'm watching this thinking nah this woman's tapped <laughs> <laughs> what would you advise what would your relationship advice be to me or any other guy watching um I think just as a man just focus on you and like the woman will come like don't force it don't chase a woman like a right woman will see that and she'll just want to add to your life like I know for me like if I, there is someone that I'm really interested in like, I'll, I'll happily shoot my shot, though. So I'm a bit different type of women. But if I like him and the way he works, like, I would try and find a way to slot my life into his, but bring him as much peace as possible. Like, I'm not... Well, I'm, not I'm not a toxic person. I'm not a female that wants to cause friction with you. Like, I don't want that. Yeah. So if I saw that you were, like, working late, I'd be like, oh, babe, like, I see that you're working till here. Like, do you want to come over and have dinner? Like, it would just be little things just to show, like, I can bring you peace. Not necessarily problems. <laughs> I need that in my life. Yeah. <laughs> that's mad. But that's good to hear about the relationship side of things. Now, moving forward for Cheyenne, yeah. what's next? Can we talk about the TV stuff, by the way? Yeah. yeah. So I'm having some positive conversations moving forward with, like, good meetings for TV. So you guys will see me on TV very soon. Yeah. What's the, what can we expect? Um. So, well, I can't tell too much because I have signed an NDA. But it's just me moving forward with, like, my career like I haven't well the that the <laughs> sort of like that. So the direction I'm trying to take my career is at the moment I still want to run with entertainment because this is where the where it all is yeah, and yeah, this yeah. is how I've built myself. So obviously with the T V angle, like I wanna go down the documentary. So in the next few years that will hopefully na navigate naturally into documentaries but what sort of documentaries though are you going to be doing like some david attenborough stuff or are you going to be doing like relationship stuff or, yeah i'd say like do? a cross between like reggie yates yeah say stacy dooley so that kind of vibe is what i'm aiming for so like i wrote a lot of documentaries myself mm -hmm. like a lot of the shows that i'm a part of like or i participate in are a lot of it is my own contribution stuff that you've directed idea. essentially yeah yeah so it's just getting it in front of the right people. Like I'm, I'm taking the meetings and I don't mm. want to jinx it. So I'm not going to say them, but everything's moving forward and I'm really just grateful for them. Yeah, no fair play. And you've got the brand deals and stuff as well coming your way as well. Yes. Sick, you know? it's, it's, a, it's a really nice feeling to know that like everything I've worked hard for, like, cause people don't see, people obviously as well see like that I did kind of have like an overnight success with grilling in the sense of I went viral really quick within the space of like a year and a half with yeah. that show. But there was so much graft going on before that. And I kind of yeah, feel... Yeah, no one sees that, though. 
no one sees that. They always think overnight success. Like, oh, where did this person come from? Exactly. But you don't understand that they've been grafting for years before that. Yeah, and even just before that, not even the grafting with the content. Like, it t- I had no money at the time and it took me like four years just to save for money. Like, and just, just even get a camera. I couldn't even afford a camera. Yeah. You know, and I was doing things on my phone. So even just the graft of working a normal job that I just had to do just to get where I needed to be. And I feel people take that for granted when it comes to this media industry because we're so competitive. I know that there's been conversations been said about me where they're like, oh, well, she just jumped on camera and got lucky. Whereas there are people that have been doing this for 10 years and haven't has been as lucky, but doesn't mean I haven't worked just as hard. No, and I, I, I don't like, believe in luck at all, I'll be honest. Yeah, like, you know. Luck exist because you create your own luck at the end of the day. Yeah. You like, know, what you've done is all down to you and yeah, your work just, rate and your hustle. Like I sit there responding to every comment. Like sometimes I can't because I get trolled hard. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I, I, I responding to every, what, every comment is in positive comment, negative yeah, comments. Yeah, I try. What? Like I, I try to be like in the beginning, I was responding to everyone, like yeah. every YouTube video, every social media clip. But after it started going to like a crazy amount of viral, I just could not reply to like a thousand comments. Yeah, no, you can't. But I try to reply to at least the first 100 comments. Yeah. No, but that's different. Though. But even then, that's what I'm saying. Like luck don't exist because... Do you believe in manifestation? A hundred percent. Yeah. What's your experience with manifestation then? Um, well, I'm a big believer on like a vision board, seeing things and just making it happen. Like if, if you can see it, like if you could actually vision it, like you can embody that, you can become that or whatever it is, but you have the choices and you have to action that also. Because as much as you can sit and dream and think, oh, I want to be a podcaster. But if you're not even actioning that, then yeah, you're never going to get happen, there. It? Yeah. It's just like uh, the last episode I've done was with Tommy Mallet, right? I mean, I asked him, what's the feeling like of being from where you were in the beginning to where you are now? And he said, his first answer instantly was, he said, familiar. Meaning he knew, he said exactly, I knew I was going to be here. I knew exactly how this is all going to pan out and everything like that. So in your life, did you believe that this is where you're meant to be? Um, I guess for me, I always knew I wanted to do something great. <laughs> Yeah. In the sense, I don't know, I'm not saying, oh, grilling and the show is great, as in... Not necessarily grilling, but you knew that you're going to be something much more... Yeah, well, this is the yeah. start of my journey. Like, I haven't even reached where I want to reach. The pinnacle, yeah. You this know, is literally the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, and so for me, the things that I plan to be doing, because for me, I'm a big believer of legacy yeah. and leaving something behind. So that's why I do a lot of charity work. And it's it's far greater, like, I have more planned, but just right now, people don't understand that, so that's why people just think I'm moving mad and chatting shit on the internet. Even, but yeah. it's for a greater reason. And <laughs> Even, just... like, I have conversations with a few guys, like, I've told a couple of guys I'm doing a podcast with you and whatnot, yeah, um, but they don't understand, like, everything that's going on. They're like, oh, but, like, what are you going to talk about and whatnot, and blah, 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 and I'm just like, you don't understand how big Cheyenne is going to be in years to come. You think this is big now? Watch when Cheyenne is gone yes. clear on another level, like Maya Jamo levels and stuff Listen, like that. Listen, yeah, shout out to Maya. She's sick. She bossed it. That's what wow. I see you as being like, that grilling is just the tip of the iceberg. So for people who know you as grilling, that's just not the be all or end all. Exactly that. How many more times do you think you're going to do grilling until you think that? I think I've got a few more seasons in me, just, <laughs> but I think the reality of it is, it's just, I have to start moving on to my next thing because I kind of feel I'm not just trying to be known for just grilling and dating men like mm. the reality of it is my the whole reason why I started this content journey is I want to make thought-provoking content that connects us together as the world like it sounds so cringing like cliche but genuinely that's that's what my purpose is my why is to bring us together as like humankind mm. yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> that's been a good conversation would you say better than last time yeah I yeah. think this is better because it's more like Journey content. Natural. Work. I'll explain it to the people who've made it this far, yeah. So basically, I've done a podcast. Me and Shine done a podcast maybe two weeks ago or something like that, yeah. Uh, we were speaking about relationships. I was probably biased towards one side. I'm not going to say what side. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, things changed later on. And then we were basically, me and Shine were just kicking back, talking after, like hours after the podcast. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll leave it like that. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, any final messages? Um, that's it. I just want to say thank you. Like, pick up yourself for everything you're doing, like your movement. Well, pick up yourself as well. It's really nice to see. And I love the fact that this is what I love about the internet. As much as it can be a crazy place, like it brings people like us together and we can just create <laughs> content. And I remember like I shouted that. you months ago to do a podcast. Like we were meant to do it time ago. I think you had a different number then as well. Yeah. <laughs> It's been that long. <laughs> so it's been a long time coming. So Shine, right. thank you very much for coming on CEO Cast. And you know what? We'll do a little cheers for yeah, success. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> oh! I spilled it this time. Oh, Mikey, I'm sorry, man. That would have been, man. <laughs>
<laughs> Everyone, I'll catch you lot on the next episode of CEO Cost. Until then, make sure you subscribe, like. What are you saying, Cheyenne? How many likes should we get for this episode? Um, put the I'm, put the mic oh. in front of you. <laughs> I don't know how many. I don't know how many do you think oh. you want. I don't know. 10,000, 20,000, 50? Yeah, 10,000's nice. 10,000 nice. All right, 20,000 likes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we'll continue it. Until then, I'll catch you next time on the next episode of CEO Cost. Peace.